All right, so what I'm hoping to show you here today is uh, how to set up a silhouette drawing in Corel Draw for the lightbox tutorial, or for the making the actual lightbox. So um, I'm going to roll right along with the tutorial here. You can use this in conjunction with it. You could use this instead of it. But uh, a few first things worth pointing out. They're on a few tips before getting started. Um, there are a bunch of toolbars all over this screen, especially once we get in here. You're going to see um, different than you know probably anything else you've ever really used. And uh, if any of you in our class um, have used Page Plus, if we had used Page Plus in the past, it's even you know even a good bit different from that um, in a lot of ways. So let's see here. Quick reference card is extremely handy. Um, just click on that at any point and I have it linked on uh, on the actual written tutorial online but um, it's going to open a window that looks like this this gives you all the keyboard shortcuts it's going to show you the toolbox all the options within the toolbox uh, there's also one for photo paint but right now for this we just need uh, Corel Draw so that can be extremely handy um, also Another one that is there is a um, quick start guide. I put a link in for the quick start guide and um, I'll bring it over here real quick. I clicked on the link that's on the website and so you know what I'm talking about. I'm on the silhouette, setting up the silhouette stuff from our tutorial, which is on the website. And the uh, quick start guide goes over a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, you can look at that if you'd like, but uh, a lot of helpful information in there. So if at any point you get stuck or want to know how to do something or want to explore a little deeper, just know that that exists. Um, so when we go ahead and uh, open up Corel Draw, this is going to pop up like this. You're going to need to, um, we're not going to do a new document. You're going to open up. Uh, the template which I already have here I'm just going to click over to but prior to this you should already have set up your download location on the desktop computer that you're using now if you're not using a desktop right now you need to get on your desktop in class this will not work on a Chromebook uh, have your download location set up to be um, Google Drive file stream and within the file stream it needs to be uh, set to your tech systems folder and if you don't know what I'm talking about go back to the early stages of the tutorial online and there's a video that will show you how to set that up anyway um, when you're in here some other things uh, that are handy zoom up top you can change it here or you can use uh, control plus or control minus to zoom in and out you gotta hit both at the same time um, we need to make sure that we're set up in inches. That's going to be extremely important. And uh, really, for now, that should be pretty good shape. So, <clears throat> getting started, bringing in your file. You need to be on the Design to Laser layer over here. And if I'm in the Objects Docker on the right hand side. All these layers above, you're not going to do anything with those. Please don't mess with any of the little options here. Um, we want to leave them exactly how I have them set up in the template. If you think you accidentally got something mixed up or changed something, let your teacher know and get you set up straight. So, um, people always do this and want to go to open to open up their... Uh, image which you know when you say it that way it makes sense but that's not how this works um, open only opens uh, Corel draw files we need to go into import so you can do file import or you can do a uh, control I in your tech systems folder mine set up different because I'm not a student so it doesn't look the same uh, but uh, I'm gonna use hokey footprints PNG so import, a lot of times people just click 
I don't want to do that. If you look carefully by my cursor, it says it's going to be almost 14 inches by 14 inches. That's huge. Um, I'm going to end up putting in a 2 inch by 2 inch box, so I don't want 14 inches. So I'm just going to click and hold, left click and hold, drag this out, see what we end up with here. Um, now that that's there, one thing that you want to check and make sure that it's selected is up here in the top, we want to make sure that this little lock shows up in the lock position. Um, if it's not in the lock position, that's the unlock position. Click on it, make it lock. Once you have that, uh, you know, I want to make sure that my image fills up the majority of this box. Not, uh, you know, the outside here, I got a lot of white space. I don't want all that white space. So I'm just going to drag this out until it looks pretty good. Uh, depending on your image, you might not need to do that, but mine definitely does with all that extra white space around the sides. I can use the arrow keys to fine tune here a bit. You know, I want to kind of balance it top to bottom and side to side. So now I have my raster image in here. Um, I need to change this over to a vector. So I'm going to go uh, up here. This is called the uh, property bar. I'm going to go up to the property bar and select trace bitmap. And we need to do an outline trace. Um, just go ahead to line, line art. Another pop-up is going to show up here, power trace. If the, uh, here's our before, here's our after. You can zoom and things here. But if the after doesn't look very good, first thing you want to do is try, uh, just go down the list and try each of these if it doesn't look good and see which one looks the best. If once you find what one looks the best, like this looks fine, it won't matter, but if yours doesn't look fine, try those out. Once you find the one that does look best, if it doesn't look great, you could try playing with detail and smoothing a bit and uh, see what, you know, what will make it look the best. And then uh, once you get that all set up, we're just going to go to OK. All right. So... What's going to happen at the moment is uh, you want to make sure and look and see if your uh, raster has been deleted. Right now it looks like it has, but if I click on this and just drag it on over, I have two. One of these two is my raster, one is my vector. The vector was on top, but I don't know if I pulled the top or bottom out from you know over here to the side. So quick, easy way to find out, click on one of the two. Over here on the right, we have uh, a palette of colors. Select the color. If it changes color, it's your vector and keep it. If it doesn't change color, it's your raster. You want to get rid of it. I want to make sure. I already know, but I want to make sure anyway. Just to show you. That one changed color. That's the vector we'll keep. The other one, delete key on the keyboard. Um, it's above the arrows. Not backspace, but delete. We'll get rid of that. Once you have that in there and set, this is not a Chromebook. <laughs> it's getting the habit of saving frequently. So you already have the file where it needs to be, you opened it from where it needs to be. All you need to do is just hit save icon up here. Once you do that, it's going to go away. Well, it won't go away, but it's going to go, you know, it won't be dark. It's going to go dull. Um, that's going to let me know that it is saved and I'm good to go ahead and move on. So, now that we've changed that over, um, there's still some steps that we're going to need to do here. So, in the dockers, um, over on the right hand side, there's hints and properties and objects. You might not see all these. I've added some in by using this little plus down here, but... Um, First of all, hints. It's a great thing. Whatever tool you have selected, it's going to tell you about it and it's going to show you how to use it. So, uh, worth throwing out there that it's right here. You can use that at any time. However, I want to select properties at the moment. And 
I need to make sure that I have my image selected here. Um, one thing I can do is I can go up to zoom and do two selected. It's easy to see. I'm at 551% zoom. I can also roll the mouse in and out to uh, zoom in and out. So, uh, what we need to do here, outline. What we're going to do with the outline at the moment, we're going to set the outline. Um, it has to be on RGB. There's a bunch of options. It absolutely must be RGB. The laser only works with RGB. R, wherever it's at, we need to slide it clear up. It must be at 255. 254 isn't going to work. It absolutely must be at 255. Double check it, triple check it. Blue and green also must be at zero. And uh, actually, you can look at the hexadecimal code down here, and it should be exactly the same. Um, pound FF0000. You can even type that in if you want to get the same. Uh, make sure it's there. And if you have something else, like this or this, um, make sure we're, I'm going to use the sliders for this whole thing. So sliders RGB 25500. Next step here. Actually, one other thing that uh, I do want to do for now, temporarily, so it's easier to see. We're going to set this to instead of none or hairline, we're going to set it to 0 0.5 or 0 line. Because I have red on red, you can't see it. Next over here, we have the fill. We're going to select the fill. Uh, just so you can see. Now you can see that outline that um, we just put on there since it's no longer red on red. The fill, we're going to do uh, right under where it says fill. The box with the X in it is no fill. We don't want to fill. Click that. It should go, and you should only see your outline. Uh, again, save frequently. Let's save this. There we go. At this point, if you only have an outline, see I got lines inside of the outer shape. Um, if you only have an outline, you can actually jump ahead and to where we uh, change the thickness of the line, and and then you know save and um, move on to the adding your other images or. Um, if it's the same one, just copy and pasting. If you have other stuff in here right now, uh, you'll need to follow along with me. So, moment. What needs to happen is uh, we need to get rid of these outer, or sorry, inner lines. The outer line is good. I want to go to the objects docker on the right hand side of the screen. The objects and um, it says group of four objects. Well, I want a group of four objects. I'm going to go uh, up to the properties bar again here. I'm going to do ungroup all objects. And that's going to break this into four different things for me. Um, what that does initially is the little trademark icon down here. I don't want that. It's too small to cut and you know I don't want that in my design. So um, I can click on one, left click, hold down shift keeping shift down and click on the other one that'll allow me to select more than one thing at a time and uh, just hit delete on the keyboard so that gets rid of that and let's see we need to now so these are showing up as two single objects I need to break those apart so I can actually do something with it. I don't want all those middle lines. If you select it, make sure it's selected. Right click and do break apart curve or you could just do control K. And if you look back over here in the docker, you're going to see it broken into three separate sections. Uh, with that, like I did a moment ago, I'm going to select the bottom of the foot, which I don't want. Hold shift and select the top of the foot I don't want and just delete. 
Um, this is what we need to have. It's just an outline, not anything in the middle. Um, for the silhouette. Again, we're just looking at silhouette here. So I'm going to do the same thing on this. Going to, well, I guess I need to do it over here on the actual shape. Break apart curve. Select the two portions that I don't want. Delete. Here we go. One other thing just to make things easier. Uh, again, I'm on the pick tool the arrow, just plain arrow. <clears throat> I'm going to take that and I'm going to select uh, both of these and I don't see what I'm looking for is the group. I don't see it here so what I can do is this little plus um, sometimes actually I lied. I don't want the plus. <laughs> I want these two little arrows. Here's group. I group that together. Now the stuff shows up up here. Um, that'll make this one solid thing instead of two separate feet. And you can see over in the uh, object docker that uh, now it's a group of two objects. If you're going to use the same design uh, in other boxes for other sides here, it'd be nice to see people do at least a couple different designs. But, you know, say I use this on the front and back, even though it's not on the front at the moment. It does matter which one's which here. The top has a different shape if you look here than all the other four. Um, if I wanted to use this on the front and back, I can set this up where I want it on the front. Again, make sure I got decent space, uh, even spacing on the top and bottom, pretty even left and right. I can fine tune with key key uh, keys on the keyboard if I want, but. I can copy and paste, control C, control V, or right click and copy and right click and paste. Um, in this program, another thing I can do is duplicate. I'm not exactly sure at the moment without doing the math how far it is from one box to the next, but if you did, uh, when I do duplicate things, whatever numbers are set up here is going to move those by that number. I don't want to move the Y at all. And this goes from the center. I'm at just shy of five. And I want to get over to about eight. So probably about three inches or so. It'll get me close. I'll select this. I'll do control D as duplicate. Control D. And I can just use the arrow keys to move it over that last little bit. That 3.076 probably was the number I wanted because I've been working with this project a bunch on the uh, computer I'm on here. The last thing we need to do is select anything you have on here right now. We need to select it. And we need to change it to hairline. Um, a lot of times, it doesn't seem to be showing up too bad here, but sometimes on some of the screens at school, it can look, be hard, hard to see with the hairline. So um, I like to leave it a little thicker, but. We do need it on hairline. If you leave it at 0.5, it's going to engrave instead of cut. The light box won't shine any light through if we engrave. You've got to cut it out. So um, any of your stuff, again, has to be the 25500. So it's pure red in RGB. And before it's all said and done, it must be set to hairline. And again, save frequently. Save it. And on to the next step. So there you have it. That's how we create a silhouette using CorelDRAW um, set up for the laser.